Multiplying and dividing a decimal by powers of 10 is very, very easy. It's so easy, it's probably easier to do it by hand than by using a calculator. Now, when I'm talking about powers of 10 here, I mean the usual powers of 10. And I also mean the decimals that are just 1 over a power of 10. So 0 0.1, which is 1 tenth, 0 0.01, which is 1 hundredth, 0 0.001, which is 1 thousandth, and so on as well. The reason that I'm including these among the powers of 10 will become clear a little bit later. But for now, it's simplest to notice that they are also very, very easy to multiply and divide decimals by. So let's see what happens when we multiply a decimal by a power of 10. Let's look at a concrete example. Let's say we want to multiply 27.0815 times 100. Well, let's see what happens. Writing this in terms of fractions, like 270815 over, I see, four digits after the decimal point, therefore, four zeros in the denominator. And I'm multiplying that by 100 whole things. Now, looking at this, I can see that there's going to be a common factor I can cancel out. I can cancel out a factor of 10 and another factor of 10. I'm just going to get those same digits, 270815 over 100. That is, those same digits, 2708. One, five, two digits after the decimal point. Now, you might, you're probably looking at this and saying, there has to be an easier way to do that. And in fact, there definitely is an easier way to do that. We can think of this as moving the decimal point two places to the right. So we started with 27.0815. Here's the decimal point. Move it one, two places. And the result is 2,708 before the decimal point, 0.15. Okay, so when we multiply by 10, 100, 1,000, something like that, we will move the decimal point to the right. And the number of places we move it is equal to the number of zeros after the 1. Okay, what about that other kind of power of 10? Let's say we wanted to multiply by 0 0.1 or 0 0.01 or 0 0.001 or one of those. Well, let's see what that would look like. Let's say we wanted to multiply 32.5 times 0 0.001. 32.5, that's 3, 2, 5 over 1, 0 in the denominator. And I'm multiplying by 1 over 1, 2, 3 digits after the decimal point, 3 zeros in the denominator. So numerator, of course, is 325. Denominator is a 1 followed by four zeros. So 325, I want four digits after the decimal point, so I need to fill in an extra zero. So I get 0 0.0325. What does that look like in terms of moving the decimal point, right? Well, here, we started with 32.5, 
And the effect that we had was to, to move that decimal point one, two, three places to the left. Of course, we only had two places to the left, so we needed to fill in a zero in order to get the third one. And that's how we got our 0 0.0325. Here we moved the decimal point three places to the left. So how do we come up with three? Well, three was the number of zeros in the denominator, or the number of digits after the decimal point. Now, this is a little bit odd, right? It's the number of zeros after the one, when we have a power of 10 that's more than one. It's the number of digits after the decimal point, when we have a power of 10 that's smaller than one. What's really going on here is we're actually keeping track of the zeros in the denominator. Now, sometimes people forget which direction to move the decimal point. There's an easy way to remember this. Just think, do you want the answer to be bigger or smaller than the number you started off with? Moving the decimal point to the right makes the number bigger. Moving it to the left makes the number smaller. When in doubt, you can always use your calculator to check. But after you've practiced this a little bit, it'll become natural enough that you usually don't need to check on your calculator. So that's multiplying. Let's talk now about dividing. Now. We know that division should always do the opposite of whatever multiplication does. So if multiplying by 100 moves the decimal point 2 to the right, dividing by it should move the decimal point 2 to the left. So let's say we wanted to work out 7 divided by 100. Now that doesn't look like a decimal. Oh, now it does. Right, 7 divided by 100, well, that's just 7 wholes divided by 100 wholes. That's the same as 7 times 1 hundredth, so 7 hundredths. We'll want two digits to the right of the decimal point. We want 0 0.07. Again, just what we have expected. Multiplying by 100, we would move the decimal point two places to the right. Dividing by 100, we move it two places to the left. So 7 divided by 100, 1, 2. And we need to fill in a zero to have two places to available. We get 0 0.07. What about the other way? If we wanted to take 4.3 divided by 0 0.001, right? That'll be 43 tenths divided by 1 over. 1 followed by 3 zeros, so 43 tenths times 1 followed by 3 zeros over 1. I see common factors I can cancel, just one common factor of 10. That's going to be 4,300 just over 1. 4,300. Oh, what happened? Yeah, we moved the decimal point three places to the right. So, one, two, three places. And again, in order to get those three places, we needed to fill in zeros. And we found 4,000. 300. So when you go to multiply or divide a decimal by a power of 10, 
you can do this by moving the decimal point to the left or right. If you're multiplying or dividing by 1, 10, 100, and so on, the number of places to move the decimal point is the number of zeros. If you're multiplying or dividing by 1 tenth or 1 hundredth or 1 thousandth and so on, the number of places to move the decimal point is the number of digits after the decimal point, and that includes the one. So that's how many places to move. How do you remember what direction? Move the decimal point to the right if you're multiplying by something bigger than one or dividing by something smaller than one. Move the decimal point to the left if you're dividing by something bigger than one or multiplying by something smaller than one. In general, you can always choose the right direction by thinking, should my answer be smaller or bigger than the number I'm starting?